lameness in farm animals it is the major problem which is often ignored in the farms it is not a disease but a problem arise of poor farm management lameness in farm animals we will basically focus on cattle it is a part of farm management guide in veterinary medicine 001 ali's veterinary wisdom let us see what is lameness and how it is going to impact lameness is any condition which affects normal walking and standing of an animal it's a very big problem in organized farms and associated with the animal agriculture it directly impacts production and it is ethically important issue associated with animal welfare to understand lameness we must have to learn the anatomy and histology of hoof anatomy of foot foot consists of three components the epidermal hoof which has five parts the corium which is the modified dermis providing nerve and vasculature and bone and associated structures this is the simple diagram showing the three components of the hoof the epidermal hoof the corium and bony structures hoof covers distal phalanx distal sesamoid bone which is the navicular bone and distal interpharyngeal joint deep digital flexor tendon attaches to the flexor tuberos tuberosity of distal phalanx within the heel and it is separated from the distal sesamoid bone by the navicular bursa navicular bursa is a fibrous tissue separating the both the bones suspensory apparatus of the distal phalanx supports the caudal edge of the bone this is the diagram this is hoof anatomy and there are its structures shin bone the fetlock joint pastern bone proximal phalanx subcutaneous connective tissue pastern joint middle phalanx distal phalanx a coffin bone it is also known as pedal bone hoof wall corium white line sole heel distal cushion navicular bone navicular bursa deep digital flexor tendon superficial flexor tendon and dew claw here it is a normal standing of an animal in a normal position in normal foot weight is taken on the heel the abaxial wall and to a lesser extent on the white line 10 to 20 mm of adjacent sole and on the axial wall running from the toe caudally along the first third of the axial space rest of the axial surface of the claw should be non weight bearing as now 
we will see how animal bear its weight in normal standing conditions here it is a part of the leg which is the foot and this is hoof it is the coffin bone and it is a side view this is side view and this is front view most of the weight in animal is bear by heel white line and abaxial side this is the abaxial side and white line and heel some of the weight is also bear by the adjacent axial side it is around one third of the length on axial side and remaining two third on the axial side up to the heel should be non weight bearing now uh, we will learn about the hoof overgrowth hoof overgrowth is uh, a big problem and often ignored farmers won't bother much about this but uh, this cause so much pain in animal so hoof overgrowth occurs at the toe which pushes the toe up and pedal bone rotates backward puts pressure on the rear edge and risk the sole ulcers hoof overgrowth occur in the lateral wall and the sole the sole ulcers are more than 30% of all causes of lameness so it is important uh, we will see in the diagram that pedal bone rotates backward coffin bone we have already seen the normal position of the hoof and the bony structure inside the hoof the coffin bone basically the distal phalanx is present in this condition which is shown in the dotted line but when hoof overgrowth occurs it pushes the coffin bone and uh, this changes its position and uh, you can see here that uh, it bears the solar tissue so this is the normal position of co coffin or pedal bone when hoof grow ho overgrowth occurs the coffin or pedal bone pushes back and pinches in solar tissue you can see here in real picture that this is the co uh, coffin bone which when hoof overgrowth occurs it pinches the solar tissue and here it is a corium and and lamina which uh, holds the these bones to the hoof when lamina uh, get affected or infected the inflammatory changes causes laminitis and it causes uh, severe pain in animals here it is the x-ray which is a normal coffin bone and when hoof overgrowth occurs you can see coffin pushes backward pushed backward and it start piercing the uh, solar tissue hoof trimming it is an important farm activity with primary aim of returning the hoof into normal shape and size there are normally differences in the sizes of the hoof the lateral hoof is bigger in hind foot and medial is bigger in front foot now the aim of hoof trimming the aim is to reduce any toe overgrowth first then the excess from the sole and then axial overgrowth and in the last cut trims the two claws back to approximately the same size with the lateral 4 to 5 mm larger for the hind foot look at the video here
Now, there are some key issues related with the lameness. Majority of the conditions causing lameness are in the hind foot. Sole ulcers and white line diseases are most common cause of lameness, which comprises more than 60%. Foreign body penetration, horizontal and vertical fissures, digital dermatitis, necrobacillosis, mud fever, slurry heel, foot rot, etc. are quite commonly seen. One serious condition is laminitis, which is the choreosis or inflammation of the corium, and it is associated with the parturition, excessive standing, nutrition, wet hoof, and some other conditions. Laminitis. It is usually seen as a chronic or subacute problem and partly responsible for sole ulcers and white line disease. Other causes of foot lameness include hoof disorder, skin disorders and bone and joint disorders. Anatomical and histological perspective. The corium consists of four distinct regions histologically the solar corium which produces the horn of the sole the perioclic corium which produces the horn immediately distal to the skin horn junction analogous to cuticle in humans and also the horn of the heel the laminar corium which produces the horn of the white line and also contains the collagen fiber bundle that make up the suspensory apparatus of the third phalanx and finally the coronary corium which lies distal to the perioclic corium and proximal to laminar corium region it pr produces the horn of the wall
histologically if we look at the corium adjacent to the corium moving towards the exterior or surface of the horned capsule is the basement membrane first is the basement membrane which is a series of epithelial cell layers that comprises the claw horn these are the germinal or basal cell epithelium stratum spinosum stratum lucidum and outermost layer the strat Adam corneum or horn layer. The germinal epithelium consists of two types of cells. The first one are keratinocytes, which are most abundant cells found in the germinal epithelium and have the ability to produce keratin within the cells. And gradually, these cells gradually moves outside toward the horn, hoof horn. The basal epithelial cells always remain in the germinal epithelium. Keratin is a, is a fiber, fibrous color protein that imparts strength to the keratin, keratinocytes. Cells with the germinal epithelium and lower layers of the stratum spinosum are living cells by virtue of the steady flow of nutrients received from the corium by diffusion across the basement membrane. Since the natural progression and movement of keratinocytes is outward from the corium and always from their nutrient source, these cells are in continual process of slow death as they reach the upper layer of the stratum spinosum and stratum Lucidium. Now, it is important to note here that the condition known as laminitis is the result in the disruption of blood flow to the corium not only affect corium but also keratinocytes within the epithelial layers destined to become claw horn flaring of the hoof wall and conca concavity of the dorsal wall of the claw are indicators of poor quality of horn decreased keratinization rates because keratinocytes were dying due to the disruption of the blood and characteristic of laminitis particularly in the chronic form now thank you viewers for watching this video next part of the laminitis in which we will see the pathogenesis of laminitis if you want to see some more videos like this please subscribe our channel on youtube thank you yeah.